Hi, I'm Emily. I'm a den leader in East Brunswick, New Jersey for PAC 501. And right now my Cub Scouts are learning semaphore signals. So semaphore is um, an alphabet code used um, by navies. It's a way of sending visual signals across um, a body of water without making any radio noise. And um, so my scouts, I want to get them to the point where I can say to them, show me a letter J and they'll display a letter J, J. Or I'll say, show me a letter C and they'll show me a C. For now though, um, I needed to be able to learn the code. And what I found was online resources were pretty much limited to pictures of people sending signals. And I couldn't memorize the letters by staring at the pictures. So I spent some time looking at the semaphore code, understanding how it, um, where it came from, and then picking a couple math concepts and a silly story um, so that my scouts could get to the point where they could practice on their own in a pattern that made sense. So um, a scout can be at home going A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, K, L, M, N, and so on. Um, so I'm going to show you how we learned it. Um, and I just had so much fun with this, so I hope you do too. So the first concept from math class that I want you to think about is an analog clock. So an analog clock like me has two hands that move in a clockwise circle, but they don't move at the same speed. So there's one hand that moves much slower than the other. And so semaphore can work like that, and I'll show you how. So the first thing you need to realize is that if you are the clock looking out at the world, your hands are not moving clockwise from your point of view. So if you watch my clockwise moving hands as I turn around, I have a counterclockwise rotation. So that's important. Our hands are always going to be moving counterclockwise as we go through our alphabet. Now our semaphore clock, there's a couple differences between that and our time telling clock. So first of all, there's only eight possible positions and we don't use the space in between them. So we have the two rays that point straight out to the horizon. We have one that goes up, one that goes down to our feet, and then the 45 degree angles in between each of those. So our positions, and I'm gonna start at the bottom. Uh, I'm gonna start at the bottom. Go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, our right hand is going to be our, our hand. And with my scouts, I had them hold a penny in that hand so that they would remember since there's no difference in length between their arms. So keep track. Um, and, uh, for now, always use the same hand as your hour hand. The second math concept we had to talk about was the idea of unique pairs. So I showed them a picture that I had of four Cub Scouts, and we were trying to figure out how many different pairs of buddies we could come up with. So if I started with my Cub Scout on the left and paired it with each of the Scouts, I had three pairs. But then if I went to my second Cub Scout 
she's already been paired with the first. So I'm only adding two new pairs when I start with her. And when I go to the third, there's only one scout that that person hasn't been paired with yet. So every time I add a starting position, I have one fewer combinations that I'm adding to the total count. All right, so now we're gonna apply it to our eight semaphore positions. So if my hour hand remains in position one, then I have this position available for my other hand, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. When I move my hour hand, now my minute hand has to stay ahead of it because if I start it here, I already used up that pair. So, um, and we don't have our flags ever positioned together. So the second time around, my minute hand stays just ahead of my hour hand. And then the third time around, now my position, my starting position is here. And so on. I'm gonna do it with my back to you so that you can see it um, as my scouts did. So we're gonna do all the possible semaphore positions. So starting with the minute, the hour hand down, the right hand down in position one, and the left hand is gonna cross it to get to the second position. So here I go. Oh. It'll show better. Here's one, two, three, My hour hand moves to the new position. This is something that the scouts can reproduce on, uh, on their own at home. So now they're going to be able to practice as soon as they have an alphabet that they can apply to those positions. Well, I'm going to show you the semaphore alphabet, which includes our 26 letters. It also includes two words, and those words are cancel and numbers because the semaphore code can also be used in a way where position, the position for letter A becomes number one and so on. I'm not gonna teach that here, but we do need to know that there's a sign for numbers um, or our clock positions aren't gonna make much sense. So here's my alphabet. You'll see that most of it is in the same order that we're used to, but J is missing. It's gonna get displaced to a later position in our alphabet. So we can say A through U as long as we remember to leave out J. After that, things get pretty weird. I don't know why I didn't invent this code, but we end up with Y, cancel, numbers, J, V, W, X, Z. So I want you to imagine that there's a person whose name is W, X, Z. W, X, Z is in high school and enjoys playing soccer very much, but being a bit younger is not on the varsity soccer team. W, X, Z is on the junior varsity team, the JV team, and so his friends sometimes affectionately call him JVWXC. Now, he really enjoys soccer, but math gives him a lot of anxiety. And so much so that he has a weird habit when he sees numbers, 
he goes around crossing them out with his pencil. He does not want to deal. Now WXC's friends know this is ridiculous. It's not practical. It's not going to serve him well. And they're always trying to try to, to get to the bottom of this and persuade him that math is really useful for all kinds of things. Um, and so they ask him, why cancel numbers, JVWXZ? My scouts didn't think this was amazing, but they remember it. So why cancel numbers, JVWXZ? Here's our alphabet order. I'm gonna show you a couple ways. So one is facing the camera and one is gonna be not facing the camera so you can practice with me. All right, so here's my alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, Y, cancel numbers, J, V, W, X, Z. There we go. All right. Okay. So now we're going through the sum of four alphabet together, all of it. I'm going to turn my back to you so that you can do exactly what I'm doing. <clears throat> so I start with my right hand down. My left hand at that 45 degree, degree angle, it's crossed across my body. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U. Here comes the weird little story. Why cancel numbers J, V, W, X, Z? Once again, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, no J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U. Here's the weird part of our alphabet. Y, cancel, numbers, J, V, W, X, Z. I hope that was helpful. Um, one difference between learning this way with the clock face and the charts that you're gonna see online is because I'm trying to always keep one hand as the hour hand and one hand as the, the minute hand, it does involve some awkward crossing. So once we get good at our semaphore signals, we become fluent in them, and we know that we wanna make a letter A, we'll make it like this. Um, I gotta say, after a couple of days of practice, my upper back was letting me know that this is not ideal long term. But for the Cub Scouts, um, for them to understand this code, it was a great way to start. Um, and so I'm hopeful that over the next few weeks, as we go through our alphabet, um, it's not gonna be too bad a process.